church. Thank you, Pastor Joe and the congregation for allowing me to preach. Uh, I know God's called me, and I appreciate the opportunity that um, the church gives me occasionally to preach. Will you please go on a journey with me today? You will need to use your imagination for some parts of the journey. But I believe with God's help, this journey will help each one of us. <coughs> we know not the day or the hour that Jesus Christ will return. But we know His Word tells us He is coming back. And His Word has never lied. It is my hope that from this journey, we can allow Jesus Christ to work personally in each of our lives today. Come go with me, will you? Just imagine that the postal employee has just dropped by with today's mail, and with it is this envelope addressed to the First Church of God in Jefferson City. Pastor Joe, would you open this envelope and read what the card says and what it says inside for me? Now, he knows nothing about this at all. I haven't talked to him at all about it, okay? Let's see what this card says. Dear First Church of God congregation, greetings from the heavenly realms. It is so good to hear from you. Thank you for inviting my son to be a part of your services. He wants to take a he wants to make a special point to attend your service on Sunday, December the second, two thousand eighteen. He will arrive, he will arrive promptly at ten fifteen a.m and is excited to see each one of you. I'm sure that each of you will make the appropriate preparations for his coming. Blessings until we meet face to face with sincerity, God. <coughs> now tell me, if you had received that and Pastor Joe had said, hey, he's coming, what would we think? We'd think oh my. Do we need to, to, to make sure all the floors are, all the carpets are cleaned? Or how about, how about all the walls? Maybe they need to be repainted? Or how about uh, everything needs to be dusted? And then what about, what about a banquet? Debbie, they would probably say, okay, we've got to have the, the biggest spread we've ever seen in our life. We've got to have a banquet because why? Because the King of Kings is coming, right? Well, with it, and this time of the season, you might think, well, we should probably have gifts for this king, shouldn't we? Some kind of a gift? I'm sure that each of us should present him with something that we have taken time to pick out. Well, this message is entitled, The Perfect Gift. The Perfect Gift. We're going to go to God's Word this morning, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to be in reading with verse uh, 7 through verse 11. Matthew chapter 2, and verse 7 through 11. And it says, Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Isn't it something how God specifically was able to tell them, these wise men, exactly what to bring? These gifts were very specific. Whenever we look at our gifts, 
all, all three gifts were, or, or, were ordinary offerings and gifts given to a king. The three gifts had a spiritual meaning. Gold as a symbol of kingship on earth, frankincense and incense as a symbol of deity, and myrrh and embalming oil as a symbol of death. Back in the time of Jesus' birth, both frankincense and myrrh were said to be more valuable than gold, the third pre precious gift offered to the infant king. Both resins are extremely fragrant and particularly when burned. It's easy to see, though, why gold is an appropriate gift for Jesus Christ. Can you just imagine, now let's, let's use our imaginations, can you just imagine that wise man as he came, and he had that gold in his hand. And, 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 and as he came, he worshipped that, that child and, and bowed down and offered that gold. Did you ever stop to think, how was that gold used? It was used in a specific way. We don't, we don't know. God's word doesn't tell us exactly what happened to it. But it had to be used in a very specific way. It was used to take care of their needs. Here, here's that wise man as they present this gold to <coughs> kings and lord of lords. Think about it. Think about it, how that was on that, on that first time when whenever those wise men had, had been led by the star, they had been led by God in, in order to find that Christ child. Gold is the medal of kings. When gold was presented to Jesus, it acknowledged his right to rule. The wise men knew Jesus was the King of Kings. Then we have the incense. And the incense, oh, and you know, we really don't know how many wise men there were because the Bible doesn't tell us that. We only know that there were wise men, whether it was two, whether it was three. And you think about this second wise man as he came. And there he is. And, and, and there's the, 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 the baby. With, with, with Mary, his mother, and, and with, it was Joseph, and offers that frankincense. And, and the joy that they had of offering those gifts, that present that God had, had directed them to bring. <coughs> frankincense. Incense was also a significant gift. It was used in the temple worship. It was mixed with the oil that was used to anoint the priests of Israel. It was part of the meal offerings that were offerings of thanksgiving and praise to God. In presenting this gift, the wise men pointed to Christ as our great high priest. And that's exactly what he was, our great high priest. The one whose whole life was acceptable and well-pleasing to his father. Then we think about this myrrh and, and whether there was a third wise man or whether there were only two, we don't know. But we know one thing. We know that that myrrh was presented to Christ. We know that that was another one of the gifts that was given to him. But it was kind of an extraordinary gift. Myrrh was used for embalming. By any human measure, it would be odd, if not offensive, to present to the infant Christ a spice used for embalming. But it was not offensive in this case, nor was it odd. It was a gift of faith. We do not know precisely what the wise men may have known or guessed about Christ's ministry, but we do know the Old Testament again and again foretold of his suffering. God's word had told them so much about who this Christ was and what he was going to go through. Now let's turn though to a, another story in, in God's word where there was a gift given. And that's in Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. And if you remember the story of Mary and Martha, do you remember how, how the Mary and Martha saw Christ, but, but they each kind of... Uh, had their, their own uh, duties that they thought was the most important. And if you recall Mary, she sat down at Jesus' feet and, and she, she was listening to every word that he said while Martha 
She was busy. She was busy, busy in the house and trying to get stuff ready and everything else. And, and Martha goes to Christ and says, don't you see that I'm doing all this work and here is Mary? But Christ said, she's chosen that this important. Well, here Mary, who is that, that same Mary, the, the, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, she gave Christ a special gift. And, and let's read about that there in Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, and begin reading with verse 3. And it says, Mark chapter 14, verse 3, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at meat, and this is talking about Christ, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always, and whensoever you will, you may do them good. But me you have not always. She has done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. <coughs> Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. We're still talking about this gift. This gift that Mary shared with Christ. That alabaster, alabaster box ointment. <coughs> the alabaster box is a species of marble distinguished for being light and of a beautiful white color, almost transparent. It was much used by the ancients for the purpose of preserving various kinds of ointment in. The ointment was of great value. It was something that was very, very, very costly. That was rare and difficult to be obtained. The Gospels of Mark and John say that it was ointment of spikenard. In the original, it is, it is actually nard. It was produced from a herb growing in the Indies, chiefly obtained from the root, though sometimes also from the bark. It was liquid, so it was easily to flow when the box or vial was open. Can you just imagine Mary as she brought that box to the Christ? And she pours it on his head. Well, there's another scripture that also talks about her pouring it on his feet. And she used her hair to, to uh, uh, wipe his feet without oil. And that scripture, I believe, we have here is in John chapter 12, where it talks about that. So she was anointing him all over. Why? Because that was a God-specific gift that Mary was supposed to do. Mary brought a large quantity and anointed Jesus' head and feet. It's shared that she anointed his feet there in John chapter 12. To, point, to pour ointment on the head was common. To pour it on his feet was an act of distinguished humility. She humbled herself. She humbled herself, why? Because God had called her to bring the perfect gift to Jesus Christ. It would be a short time and Jesus would be betrayed by Judas and crucified. You see, all of this was exactly in God's timing. Do you believe that the God works right on time? Come on now. Come on. Do you believe that God works right on time? Amen. I believe he does too. Now, in, in our timetable, sometimes we think he's quite late, but he's not. And then other times we may say, oh boy, I wouldn't have done that, but that was God. God sees the whole picture. Well, from the card that Pastor Joe read to us, if you were expecting Jesus Christ to come and meet with us within a week, 
What gift would you choose for him? What gift would you choose? We're talking about the perfect gift today. Would you spend much time trying to come up with the perfect gift for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? I mean, truly. Think about it for a moment. If you only had one week that you knew that Christ was going to be coming here to, to meet you. Would this gift be in your budget? You know, uh, Deb and I, we, we went through that Dave Ramsey <coughs> series. This would t totally, totally throw our budget totally into kilter. <laughs> <laughs> it was something that we hadn't prepared. Or would you pay for something you knew that you would be giving to, to the Savior, Jesus Christ, if you truly knew that that's where you were going to be taking it, what would you give? Would you know what color to pick out of a whole host of colors to choose from? You say, now let's see, what color, what color is Jesus' color? I don't think that the Bible really specifically tells us. You might think, well, not purple. Maybe purple would be the color. I believe that this perfect gift that is wrapped and ready to give is the perfect size. It's the perfect color. It's something that Jesus Christ would really appreciate getting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this gift is one that is always given from the heart. It is one that will have a true cost for you to pay and is a gift that never goes out of style. You see, some things go out of style. They may be popular right now, but you give yourself 10 years or so and this thing's out of style. This gift is never out of style. It is a gift that will make Jesus Christ very happy to receive. And he will know that you have taken a lot of time to choose this perfect gift. Jeannie, tell me, what do you think of this box? My heart. You're very close. You're very, very close. Yeah? Michael, what do you think's in this box? Here, you, you, you handle it. It feels heavy for a heart. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you were going to give that perfect gift and you had one week, I mean, it would be some of you ladies shop until you drop, did you? <laughs> That's what you'd be doing. Stop till you drop until you found that perfect gift, right? <coughs> Mark, what do you think today? <coughs> this perfect gift. Now you have to look very, very carefully in order to see what the perfect gift is, okay? The perfect gift is... <laughs> yes. Yes. That perfect gift is you. And you see, he doesn't want just part of you. He wants 
all of you. Jesus Christ wants nothing greater than having all of you. You see, when you give Jesus Christ your all, he can work through you the easiest. It is only when you give Jesus Christ a portion of yourself he is limited on what he can do through you. When Pastor Black from Jamaica was here, she reminded me She reminded me what God can do with a soul that is totally consecrated to God. I was changed by Pastor Black speaking. <coughs> Pastor Black realized on Jesus Christ in all aspects of her life. Not just on Sunday, but every day of her life, she reminded me that we all are called to be disciples for Christ. And that he will use those in a remarkable way. Do you believe that he's using her in a, in a remarkable way, Pastor Black? <laughs> Amen. Why? Because she is totally sold out to him. You see, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20 says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. In the midst of them. These are Jesus' own words. So he is here today. Do you believe that? Amen. He's here today. He will be here next Sunday. You may not see him, but he'll be here. As we think about our lives, can we say that we are more devoted to Jesus Christ today than we were one year ago? How about five years ago? Or ten years ago? Are we giving Jesus Christ more of our life or less? If you're here today and you would be honest with yourself, would you say you are closer to Christ or do you sense more distance between your relationship? You see, if, if anyone has moved, it's us. I want to read you a very, very short little story that a, a man gave me several years ago and, and in our move, I just come across, you know, you can come across a whole bunch of things that you forgot about when you move. We still have boxes that we're still unpacking. <laughs> this story is entitled, Push. Push. A man was sleeping one night in his cabin when suddenly his room was filled with light and God appeared. The Lord told the man he had work for him to do and showed him a large rock in front of his cabin. The Lord explained that the man was to push against the rock with all his might. So this man, so, so this the man did day after day. For many years he toiled from sunup to sundown, 
his shoulders set squarely against the cold, massive surface of the unmoving rock, pushing with all of his might. Each night, the man returned to his cabin, sore and worn out, feeling that his whole day had been spent in vain. Since the man was showing discouragement, the adversary, Satan, decided to enter the picture by placing thoughts into the weary mind. He will do it every time. You have been pushing against that rock for a long time and it hasn't moved. Thus he gave the man the impression that the task was impossible and that he was a failure. Thoughts these thoughts discouraged and disheartened the man. Can I tell you, Christ will try to Christ will try to help you in all avenues, but Satan will try to discourage you with whatever you're doing. Satan said, why kill yourself over this? Just put in your time, give him just the minimum effort, and that will be good enough. That's what the worried man planned to do, but he decided to make it a matter of prayer. And to take his troubled thoughts to the Lord. Lord, he said... <coughs> I have labored long and hard in your service, putting all my strength to do that which you have asked. Yet after all this time, I have not even budged that rock by half a millimeter. What is wrong? Why am I failing? The Lord responded compassionately, my friend, when I asked you to serve me and you accepted, I told you that your task was to push against the rock with all of your strength, which you have done. Never once did I mention to you that I expected you to move it. Your task was to push. And now you come to me with your strength spent, thinking that you have failed. But is that really so? Look at yourself. Your arms are strong and muscled. Your back shiny and brown. Your hands are calloused from constant pressure. Your legs have become massive and hard. Through opposition, you have grown much and your abilities now surpass that which you used to have. True, you haven't moved the rock, but your calling was to be obedient and to push and to exercise your faith and trust in my wisdom. That you have done. Now I, my friend, will move the rock. At times when we hear a word from God, we tend to use our own intellect to decide for what he wants. When actually what God wants is just simple obedience and faith in him. By all means, exercise the faith that moves mountains. But know that it is still God who moves mountains. Amen. Amen. God still moves mountains. You believe that this morning? He does. He moves mountains. When everything else seems to go wrong, just push. But you know what push stands for? P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. When the job gets you down, and my job has in the last 11 months, just push. When people don't do as you think they should, just push. When you can't find the right work, just push. When your money is gone and the bills are due, just push. When people just don't understand you, just push. Pray until something happens. And I tell you, I am so thankful for a church that truly believes in the power of prayer. It changes things. God is working in our midst. The question is, though, this morning, have you given Christ your all? I'm going to ask if the praise man will, well, the worship team will come up. The question is, are you closer today than you were a year ago? Maybe you've gotten tired and kind of worn out thinking, I just, I just have failed. 
miserably, but no, if you're minding God, God gives you the strength that you need. So many times, and I believe, even through Pastor Black showing me, you know, I was going through life, but truly, using the opportunities that God was giving me in my pathway to reach out to people, to let them know, hey, God cares about you. We can become so busy that we just kind of let that slide. But God wants to use each and every single one of us. For his glory, for his sake. Pray until something happens. As we have an altar call here shortly, just after we pray, this altar here is used. If you want to come up and talk to God, you would rather just be able to be by yourself. This is this altar over here. But if you would like to have someone come and pray with you, we have an altar right here. And this, this, is, this is kind of our, our signal that you are like people to pray with you. You know, there's never a need too great that God cannot handle. You may say, boy, but you don't know what I'm going through. But God does. Pray until something happens. I'm going to have people stand. I'm going to have a prayer and I'm going to have the worship team go. Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning and we are thankful for who you are and how you work. We pray, Lord, that you will continue working on this this morning. Help us, Lord, to do exactly what you call us to do, to be totally yours, to give our whole life to you, our whole all to you, as that gift to you. Praise saints in Christ's name.